Okay, we're about one third of the way into March. April 1st, our fishing license is reset. I still have slots left on my license for some Chinook. So today I'm heading out to a bay outside of Victoria, BC, see if I can fill two of those slots. Let's see how I do. I should probably get a stern line. Well, the water looks good. There's quite a few boats out here. I think I'm seeing five or six, seven boats maybe, and even a kayak. So it look, doesn't look rough. Okay, so on the right, I'm gonna run this brand new white glow flasher, comboed with a white hooch. And then on the other side, I'm gonna run this blue flasher, the glow panel, with the, uh, the blue and silver Gibbs Skinny G. It's usually easier for me to get two in the water and then once I got them both in the water then I can put them both down. I'm going to send this guy down a lot deeper. We got 126 feet of water. I'm going to put this guy down near 85. All right, here we go. We're fishing. So we've got the one on the left here down to 72 feet and that's the one that's running the blue flasher and the blue and silver skinny G. And then on the right We've got this one down to 85 feet, and that's the one that's running the uh, white flasher with the white hoochie on it. So it is amazing out here. It's so calm. I love it. Getting a little bit of rain now, but that's all right. I'd rather the seas be calm and we get rain than it be rough and we get sun. So I'm okay with this. Yeah, that's a giant whale watching boat. I don't see any whales though. Well, the bite is slow, that's for sure. Uh, we've probably been trolling maybe 20 minutes, half hour, nothing yet. Not even a little shake or anything, so we'll keep going though. This one down to 98 feet. I've got this green flasher as my uh, replacement. Got it charging up with this UV light. I'm going to combo it with this Gibbs Skinny G, orange green, and it's a white glow. Throw that under the UV lamp too. Got a little bait ball on the uh, on the sounder. The rain's really starting to come down. That's all right. All right, I'm gonna pull this one up and have a look. I just pulled up the right side raw. There's nothing on there, but it's getting a little windy. We're just getting a little bit of surface chop now and some small rollers, but it's all good. I'm gonna throw this green flasher on here now. But I've swapped up the right side, so I've got that green flasher and the green and orange skinny G on there now, all charged up, ready to go. I just put it down to 50 feet, so I don't know. Try something shallow. One's, I think this one's at, yeah, 98. So we got one at 50, one at 100, basically. I just saw a sea lion surface over there. That was pretty cool. Okay, just did a check on the uh, left side line. Nothing on there, but I brought it up to uh, 61 feet. Put it back down. I'm just going to stay close to this island and see how we can do. Okay, done uh, bait checks on both. Switched over the gear on my right side rod. It's running that green flasher with the green and orange and white skinny G. And then on this side, I'm still running the blue flasher with the blue and silver skinny G. There's two eagles on that island over there. Running down the road, trying to loosen my... Well, still nothing. I've got the lines brought up to about 50 feet right now. There we go, found a bait ball down at 150 feet. Might have to go deep, I'm gonna mark the spot. So this Garmin is a GPS as well. I just marked a spot, that's that point 186. So I'm gonna try to do a turn and come back on that and I'll lower my uh, left rod down. The 140 or something. 
I'm getting back on that line and heading up to the, towards that point 186 there. I've lowered this guy down to 144, so hopefully we get around that bait ball and uh, we find a fish. Well, I hooked into one, but I might have lost it. I don't feel anything now. So the plan worked almost exactly to a T. Got back on that line, put the put the rod down to 144 feet, and then sure enough, right when I got to that bait ball, it, something hit, but I just lost it on the way up. I'll go back over, try it again. That deep with uh, manual downriggers is not fun, but whatever. This one's set down to 145, so. All right. That guy at 145 finally hit. This feels like a decent fish. Oh yeah, let's hope he's a hatchery. Nah, I don't know. There he is. Nice little guy. Let's see if we can get a net on him here. Might have to play with him a bit. It's Never the easiest thing trying to net your own fish. There we go. All right. Nice little hatchery Chinook. He's probably seven pounds or something like that. You see the adipose fins clipped off there. I'm gonna give this guy a bonk and bleed him out. We'll take him home for dinner. That's exciting. There we go. Nice little hatchery Chinook. One more of those and we've limited it out for the day. All right, so that one was caught at 145 feet on that blue flash or with that blue and silver skinny jean seems to work I like the blue in the winter I've got it back down there I'm just gonna try to match the speed I was going last time and hopefully we get hooked into another one Give this guy a good rinse the regulations right now are uh, two Chinook a day. They have to be hatchery and they have to be over 45 centimeters. This guy's a hatchery and he's clearly over 45 centimeters. That's probably like 65, 70, somewhere in there. Well, the sun's back out, so that's awesome. And seas are great and I caught a fish. Oh, I got a cheese bun here with some Swiss cheese, tomato, sun-dried tomato oven roasted turkey and some mayonnaise, salt and pepper. Going over a big bait ball right now, so good chance for this guy to hit, I think. Oh, look at that. It's not even a salmon, I don't think. I think it's a rockfish. Oh, no. Interesting. Yeah, little rockfish, little one. We'll have to send that back down with a descending unit. He came from deep too. Damn. He's a cool looking fish, but we gotta get him back in. So I've got this uh, descending device. Basically what I'm gonna do is drop it through his gills and then send him down. Uh, he came from 145 feet. So you want to get them back down to the bottom without causing any any more issues. So I'm sending them down there. You try to bring them down kind of slow. This helps them survive the barotrauma where their uh, their bladder can come out. And I'm just gonna pull this up. There we go. There's a device without a fish on it. So I'm probably brought them down a little faster than I should have, but. At least we got them down there. I would probably go slower next time. I don't do this a lot. It's actually just a halibut spreader bar with a bend right where my finger is here. 
and then a big one ounce ball or one pound ball. Yeah, those fish, uh, we have conservation areas all over in BC to protect them. There's actually one just over here. So if you look on any of our maps, all the red areas are rockfish conservation zones. Get this guy back on here and back in the water, send him down to maybe 140, 130 feet, something like that. Let's see if we can find ourselves another fish. Same blue flasher, same blue and silver skinny G. Rods back down there, that's a same blue flasher, blue and silver skinny G at 121 feet on the left. And then on my right rod, I'm down at uh, about 110 feet. I'm running that green flasher with that same green and orange and uh, white glow. This thing hasn't hit at all, so I might pull that up, have a look. There might be seaweed on it or something. I love me some ding-dongs. These things are great. 460 calories in this little bag. Heck yeah. Well, that's not a salmon, that's for sure. I uh, finally did a bait check on my right rod. And it looks like I got a little rockfish on here again, so. I don't know how long I've been dragging this guy for, but I'm gonna have to send him back down with the descending unit. Oh, he's alive, there we go. That's good, It's a good sign. We'll get him back down there. I wasn't recording, but I uh, just missed one at 88 feet. Got him right to the surface and then he fell off. I don't think he was huge. Yeah, I must have missed it biting, but I looked over and the downrigger clip was popped. Usually it takes a bigger fish to pop the clip, but I was moving at a pretty good speed, so it might've just been the speed of the boat. But anyway, reeled him up. Didn't think there was anything there. And then I got him to the surface and he started tugging and then I saw him for half a second. Anyway, both lines are back in the water. Uh, oh, looks like this guy might be doing something. What are you doing? Bouncing? That consistent shake like that, that's not a good sign. That usually means I'm tangled up, either on the other line or the other uh, on the weight or something. It's been kind of windy blowing me around as I'm trying to get these things launched. So it's a good chance I got this thing tangled up. Oh yeah, yeah, all right, I gotta deal with this. It wasn't actually that bad. I ended up just pulling on the line and it came, all came up together as one piece and it doesn't even look like the leader's too wrapped up, so. I think I should be able to salvage the leader even. After something like that, I like to take my hand and I just run it down the leader line just to make sure there's no gouges. You're just feeling for any kind of gouges. If you find a gouge, you should probably replace the leader. You don't wanna catch a big fish and have it snap because of that little gouge. Well, I didn't put any crab traps out today. Uh, I haven't had good luck with crabbing lately, but I also just didn't have time. I uh, didn't leave the house till about one o'clock and I'd, I'd rather be salmon fishing than crabbing, but I think next time I come out, I'll make sure I bring some traps. Passing over a monster bait ball right now, so you never know. Might be time for these rods to start catching fish. March. 10, 20, check, 5. Looks like they're pulling one in over there. He's got him in the net. I'm gonna start trolling my way back in. If I get one, I get one. If not, I've got a good fish. Probably got a couple hours of light, but I'd like to get home and get the boat all washed up and fish cleaned and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna pull this one up and pack it in. Be careful leaving that fish there because that guy's just waiting to snag it up. So
for this adventure. The boat's packed up and the salmon's filleted and I am heading home. Until next time.